Welcome to Beverages with Brad. This is my guest, Brendan Kirby from The Road Show. Brad, how are you? So I had The Road Show live earlier this morning on WPRI 12, 9 a.m. weekdays. Right. Thanks. It's always an exciting day when I can potentially ruin two shows in the same day. So you started the day on like a real show? <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, you were feeling professional and everything. What? And now you're sitting at a Dunkin' Donuts with Brad Pierce on a seldom watched YouTube show. <laughs> at what age did you know that you wanted to get into television? Very young. I, I was afraid of my own shadow in high school. I didn't like the sight of myself in, in high school. I didn't like the way I sounded. I didn't want anyone looking at me. And then I had some kind of epiphany in college, and I really realized, hey, I might be able to do that. What, what do you think it was in college, though, that snapped you out of that? Uh, I slipped in the tub and hit my head. I think it was this public speaking class that I took. And when I started speaking in front of people and sort of being unafraid to voice my opinion in class, I was like, no, I, I can do this. Yeah, I interned at WPRI 12 when I was in college, and I actually interned for the Letterman show as well. So I wanted to really be the writer's intern, but the talent department wanted me, so I would handle anything guest-related. And you're involved in the day-to-day -day production of the show, so you learn how the segments are produced, you learn how it all comes together. How, how was Letterman? Was he a douche? No. <laughs> Why would you say that? Oh, he couldn't have been sweeter. He was and a nice guy. He was a very nice guy. He didn't have a lot of inner... So what do I know? I know, come on. Let's let's get to the point where you uh, decide to go audition for the road show. For the road show. So I auditioned for the road show, and I didn't get it. I made it to like the top 20. And I thought, well, that's the end of that. You don't want me, I don't want you, you know? But then you realize, some time goes by, maybe you need to try again. And the next thing I knew, they were calling me back. I was shipping my... My car back here, back in Rhode Island, and I've been here ever since. The, the road show is basically like the news light. You know, we're, we're spotlighting what's going on in Rhode Island. We're having some fun, you know, we're, we're living life, we're having fun, we're eating well. That's the mantra that I tattooed on my lower back. Uh, yeah. Who's your favorite guest you've ever had? Oh, I get this one a lot. The best types of guests, I think, are the human interest ones. We had this girl on recently. She won the Rhode Island Spelling Bee. Okay. And I love that. Anytime there are kids on the show, they're just unvarnished, they're not overthinking things, and they're just kids, and you can have fun with that. Stan Lee has been on the show, Marvel yeah. legend icon, um, Conor McGregor, the MMA fighter. Like, I've oh. got to interview him. Oh, wow. Like, how was he? He was awesome. But the thing is, you get to do these things that you would never think you would get to do. I mean, I've done zip lining on the show, but I've played a game of horse with one of our guests on the Friars. So we're doing a segment live at the Roger Williams Park Show. I'm going to be mounting a camel. So that's on a Monday. Thursday night, uh, a former intern of our show texts me. And she says, Brendan, you're on Jimmy Kimmel tonight. They used a clip of you in the unnecessary censorship sketch. Ah. So I am really excited. The segment comes on, Kimmel tosses to the clip, and they have me at the zoo, and I got the microphone there, and I say, Rumor has it, I will be a camel very shortly. You don't want to miss that. It was really a cool moment. Uh, yeah. Fan exchanges when you're out, you know, getting coffee and stuff like that. You know, you it's get... funny because the road show's on early in the morning. Nine o'clock. So it's for unemployed middle-aged women. I, <laughs> I could be so lucky. You think when you get this gig, oh, it's going to be Babe City. You know, the, the ladies will be lining up. Because a lot of hot chicks are waking up at 9 a.m. on a Tuesday to watch some yeah, television. Exactly. To watch some that, that Brendan guy, oh, I don't see a ring. <laughs> so one day, we're on a live shot. I don't remember where we were. And this lovely young, you know, lady comes up. And I'm like, okay, you know, here we go. go. She's like, may I have a picture? And I'm like, totally. And she goes, I just want to tell you. I'm my a man. <laughs> That would have been funny. She goes, my great, great grandmother is a huge fan. And I said, well, tell Louise I said hi. All great kidding girl. aside, you know, we, we make jokes. And a lot of people see us and it's very rewarding. And certainly I have fun by telling you something like that. But we meet lots of awesome people. Awesome, man. I hope you keep uh, keep at it. I hope the show does well. Thank you, buddy. And um, I hope all your fans don't die off. <laughs> I'll hey. keep you posted. <laughs> I've signed like a million oxygen tanks. Any goals uh, in your mind right now, uh, other than obviously keeping the show rocking? So I just want to keep doing a great show, and I'm really open to wherever the future might take me. Hey, maybe back to beverages with Brad Part 2. One could only dream.